We don't need to tell you the world is changing. You've lived through it. You're still living through it. We're a strong and resilient community. But 2020 has tested us. Our economy, our society, and our daily lives have all been disrupted. But with disruption comes opportunity. In March this year, just as COVID-19 was shutting Australia down, 16 teams of founders took the brave step of committing themselves to their startups. They committed to 14 intensive weeks of training. They committed to having their ideas and opinions challenged and questioned. They committed to facing the very real risk of failure. Over the past four months, they dedicated their time to learn global best practice in startup development. And today, after weeks of investigation, validation, pivots and practices, the 10 graduating teams of the program are ready. Ready to tell you what they've been up to and what they have planned for the future. Welcome to Digital Demo Day for the Enterprise Born Global Incubator. Enterprise acknowledges the Tasmanian Aboriginal community as the traditional owners of the land on which we operate, and I pay respect to their elders, past, present, and emerging. I'm Casey Farrell, General Manager of Enterprise. Welcome to Demo Day for the first cohort of our Born Global Incubator program. Our COVID-19 shutdown began in the week we were meant to start this program. We had selected the 16 teams from nearly 50 applications. We had completed renovations on our workshop space, set up new furniture ready for the teams to work together and lined up the content and guest presenters. The teams were ready to come in for the Monday evening and on the Friday before, we decided to push the start back by only one week to move to an entirely online delivery of the program. The enterprise team, Joanna and Amy in Hobart, Caitlin and Hope in Launceston, our expert in residence, Brian, and advisor Richard, pulled out all stops that week to make sure we could deliver to the teams who had put so much on the line to join the incubator. And boy, did they deliver. I couldn't be more proud of what we achieved and what it has meant for 16 Tasmanian startups. Today, we celebrate their success. Thank you for joining us for Demo Day. Over the next hour, you'll hear pitches from the 10 teams who graduated in this first cohort. Their ideas come from a broad range of industries, each with very different business models. But what they hold in common is that they have the potential for fast global growth, not relying on human resources to scale, and they each have an unknown or untested business model. This is the core of what makes a startup. The combination of high risk and huge potential. Out in the world, 99% of startups at this early stage will fail. Our purpose through this program is to support Tasmanians to have the best chance possible at being in that 1%. The 1% globally is valued at around $4.5 trillion, over $400 billion was invested by venture capitalists just last year. Closer to home, Australia is on its way to becoming a significant contributor to and beneficiary of the startup economy. Melbourne and Sydney are now in the top 40 startup ecosystems in the world. Here in Tasmania, we're not quite there yet, but we're making rapid strides in the right direction. Applications for this incubator cohort were up nearly 200% compared to our 2018 pilot. Our Big Ideas Challenge for the very start of an entrepreneurial journey just finished with over 100 participants. Events at enterprise venues in the last 12 months have attracted over 9,000 total attendees. We've also seen the establishment of the Seed Lab Incubator and Energy Lab ran an accelerator cohort in Launceston just before the COVID shutdown. This activity will be critical as we rebuild in a post-COVID world. After every recession, the fastest job growth is in new and young businesses. After the Great Recession in 2009, job growth in tech was stronger than any other segment of the economy. And in that time, now household names WhatsApp, Groupon, Instagram, Uber, Pinterest, Slack and Square were all founded. Right now, Tasmanian startups have the best opportunity for success that they've ever had. 
Before we hear from our startups, we have a couple of short keynotes. First up, we have Michael Ferguson, Minister for State Growth, Science and Technology, then John Perry, Tasmanian Coordinator General and Chair of Enterprise. We all know Tasmania is a great place to live with a vibrant culture that's teeming with creative minds, people who are watching this video. And if you haven't already heard, it's a brilliant place to develop a startup as well. Through our investment in enterprise, the Tasmanian government is supporting the development of more entrepreneurial activity and an energetic startup community for our beautiful state. Enterprise is giving not only access to tools and knowledge and mentoring and support, but also drop in as well as permanent collaboration spaces to help you turn your ideas and concepts into viable commercial projects to start your business and to help solve challenges in our community. And I hope as well employing and training uh, the next generation. So this year Enterprise has developed two flagship programs for the community. The first is the Big Ideas Challenge and the second is the Born Global Incubator. Well, the Big Ideas Challenge has already welcomed over 100 participants including 60 from the north and northwest of Tasmania. It's also served as the perfect foundation for Tasmanian founders to get up and running with their startup journey from the basics of how successful startups are built, how ideas can be tested and validated, and even how ideas should be pitched for investment, um, and of course go to market. And the Born Global Incubator, well, that's merged world's best practice methods in startup development with our own Tasmania's most eager early stage startup founders. It's been across a range of industries, including sports tech, tourism, languages, building regulations, entertainment, and FinTech. So today's live pitch event will no doubt be inspiring and informative, and I hope these will spark more innovation, more great ideas. These are the things that are so crucial to Tasmania's economic and social future. It will help make sure Tasmania continues to retain its well-earned smart island status because people in other states and other countries have noticed what we're doing. So let's keep going with that. So with no further ado, to everyone who's pitching and presenting today, I want to wish you good luck. I want to thank you for participating in these events. And I also want to say a big thanks to the wider enterprise community. You're doing a great job. I want you to keep going with it. To those watching at home, I hope I can say to you that you'll be inspired by what you see and hear today and perhaps even consider taking part in future events and getting more involved with enterprise. As the Minister for Science and Technology, I think we've come a great distance in a short amount of time and I can't wait to hear about the projects that you and your teams will bring into the world. So good luck. Welcome to Demo Day. It's my pleasure to join you to celebrate the startups and ideas being presented today. As Chair of Enterprise, I'm fortunate to be part of the growth of the organisation, and I'm thrilled with the development of our two flagship programs in 2020, which have been made possible by a successful NISA grant application, the Big Ideas Challenge and our Born Global Incubator. The programs that the Enterprise team, Casey, Caitlin, Joanna, Hope and Amy, have delivered are second to none, with global best practice in lean startup methodology at the forefront of their design. Enterprise is charged with helping build and support the Tasmanian startup ecosystem, creating a vibrant community of innovative, knowledgeable and passionate entrepreneurs across our state with a shared drive to create change, to solve problems and to disrupt industries. We've seen this happen across the globe and we can all name successful startups in Australia and throughout the world, which have gone on to scale into major companies supporting economic development and providing employment not only in their region of origin, but reaching far and wide. Through enterprise, we and our entrepreneurs are proving that Tasmania is not so very far away, that we're more connected than ever. We have the tools, the resources and networks to provide Tasmanian startups with the best opportunity for success and to take their place on the global stage. And it's not going without notice. Homegrown startups on the cusp of global success are already a part of our community. And along with the globally successful companies choosing to have a presence or indeed a home in Tasmania, all are sharing their insight and expertise within our island and enriching the community we're seeking to build. Demo Day represents another step forward for Tasmania as an enticing place to develop and launch a startup. Congratulations and all the very best to the founders pitching today. Tasmania can't wait to see where your startup journey leads you. 
Thank you very much, Michael and John, for those words and for your ongoing support of Enterprise. It's time now for the main event. 10 pitches from the graduating teams of the first 2020 cohort of Born Global. If you're watching this stream on the Enterprise website, you'll have noticed that we've given you 50,000 virtual dollars to invest in the startups. You can do so by clicking the plus and minus buttons next to each team, which will adjust your investment in $1,000 increments. This is a bit of fun, a way to give some simple feedback to the teams on their performance today. Invest it all in one team or spread it out a bit. You can change your investment choices right up to the end of the presentation. That's enough from me. It's time now to hand over to the startups. Enjoy. Pitching grouping mates, here's Juan Noriega and Erwin Ariza. Friends are the family we can choose. A research indicates that having friends produces better health results than quitting smoking or even exercising. But what is the problem? The problem is that going out is too expensive. If you combine activities such as food, drinks, and other entertainment activities, it could cost up to $150 per person per night. That's why we came up with a new subscription e-commerce experience for a fair price called Grouping Mates. Theme party boxes delivered to your door to share and enjoy with your mates. Every fortnight you would get a surprise box with four elements inside. Games would be the first one. Depending on the theme, you might have a box with play cards, dice games or board games, while other boxes might have what we call four games competition who won more games would be the champion. Which game would be next month will be always a surprise. Music playlists will combine Australian hits with new music to discover. What is best? Our playlists will be always available on YouTube and Spotify. Cocktails is the next element. You choose the flavor between sour, sweet or a mix of both and then we surprise you with the cocktail. Just follow our easy step-by-step -step videos and enjoy your drink. What would be a party without some food snacks to share with your friends? Cooking with us is easy peasy. After you cook, have fun with our dynamics to share your eating with your friends that for sure would make you laugh. Our theme parties are endless. Transport yourself to different times, occasions and events. One weekend, you could be having a 80 retro party. Then the next one, why not having an AFL party? With our boxes, you would never get bored. We have some indirect competitors delivering wine, cocktails, food, and games. However, no one offers the group in Mike's experience combining all these elements plus music playlists. Our target are customers from 30 to 50 years old, curious and sociable people willing to try new things. Our products can reach up to 3 million customers who are already buying products to be delivered periodically. Met in a party, became friends, and now we're family. Juan, who is the owner of Camaldo, a branding website and marketing agency. Myself, Erwin, the founder of Contempo Cleaning and Folk Chain International. Group Mates is looking for publicity connections. People willing to be part of our experience, try our boxes and help us to reach the next level of our business. Ready for our boxes? We are ready to go. Enjoy our parties. Group Mates, theme party boxes delivered to your door to share and enjoy with your mates. Pitching guide guys, here's David Robison.
Holidaying is hard work. To start with, there's literally a planet full of destinations to choose from. And once you pick where to go, that's actually when the hard work begins. What should I see? What should I do? How long should I do it for? What will I be missing out on? These are just some of the questions that a tourist is gonna to have to answer if they wanna make the best out of that well-earned holiday. Currently, tourists are forced to answer these questions in one of two ways. They'll either spend hours researching online, trying to filter through the good advice and the bad. And at the end of all of that, they'll still only be about 75% sure that the itinerary they've made for themselves is correct. That's some serious FOMO. Otherwise, they'll end up spending hundreds of dollars on guided tours that ultimately take away their freedom by dictating where they go and what they experience. The Guide Guys app provides tourists with a better solution to answering these questions by automating the tour guide experience. Using GPS technology, our app delivers intriguing stories and local tips to tourists as they approach a place of interest on their journey. With Guide Guys along for the ride, they have the ability to access all the local advice that they've ever desired whilst maintaining the complete freedom to experience their destination on their own terms, all at the fraction of a price of a guided tour. Our initial business strategy is to target Tasmania as a pilot market for the app. Over 50% of tourists visiting Tasmania are visiting for the first time and a majority choose to self-drive. This is a market crying out for authentic and easily accessible tourist advice. With our goal to sell multiple tours to each visitor, Selling 20,000 tours annually is an achievable target. Once we achieve traction, we plan to take the app to the mainland and then to the rest of the world. Multiple revenue streams have been identified for the Guide Guys app. Revenue has initially been gained through the sale of on-demand tours to consumers. Additionally, we've also validated an opportunity to sell wholesale access to our tours to tourism accommodation providers and operators who will go on to provide a discounted or free access to our tours to their consumers as part of their own product offering. Lastly, as the app's user base grows, the ability to advertise through paid in tour content will be sold to tourism SMEs that operate along Guide Guys tour routes. Beyond being passionate about telling Tasmanian stories, I have a history of successfully delivering in a startup environment. I was one of the first hires of a now ASX listed tech startup and led its operations team through the business's global expansion. I'm ready to take the lessons I learned there to build something as new and exciting as Guide Guys. At this stage of our journey, we're looking to pursue strategic partnerships with tourism operators and accommodation providers who would like us to provide special or premium access to our tours to their customer base. Also, if you have a phone, download the Guide Guys app for free. Check it out and spread the word. We're on a mission to change the way tourists experience their destination by providing them with authentic local advice at every turn. If you're interested in our product, please reach out. Pitching bounce higher, here's Emma Bug. Leah is hosting a surprise birthday dinner party for her partner, Mike. She needs access to things she doesn't own, but she doesn't want to buy them for the sake of one night. Plus, they don't have space to store things. Morty lives in the same neighborhood as Leah and Mike and owns the things Leah needs. She'd be happy to earn some extra cash by hiring out her items, but the thing that stops her is the stress of trusting they'll be safe. Many households own a drill, and while some are used to their dying day, the average lifetime use of a drill is just 13 minutes. The good news is we're seeing a global movement emerge towards a change in consumer behaviours to access over ownership. Peer-to-peer -peer lending allows items to be shared, transcending the idea of ownership and evolving towards a sustainable sharing economy. For millennials, home renovators, renters and travellers, Bounce Hire is a website that connects item owners to hirers. Bounce Hire acts as the middleman a trusted third-party website to facilitate safe hire transactions. For peace of mind, an optional bond is held and released should anything go wrong. Because hey, sometimes it does. As an item owner, you earn money and de-risk hiring out your stuff with the peace of mind Bounce Hire has got your back. The thing that will set Bounce Hire apart from competition is a responsive customer support team, a localised map to see what's available in your community and a simple, smart web platform design. 
Revenue is derived from a 15% listing fee shared between item owner and hirer from targeted ads on the site and to close the gap, data is sold on to large producers of consumer goods to help them adapt to a changing marketplace. Research indicates there are 9 million potential customers across Australia and New Zealand and in the first year we aim to reach 90,000 early adopters within the segment, scaling to an international market within two years. My team consists of me, Emma Bug. I come from a creative background in jewellery design and have been running my own business since 2010. I have a passion for problem solving, innovative thinking and disruptive design. The driving force behind this idea is to actively play my part in creating a better world for my son along with the 2.5 billion more people set to join the consuming class in the next few decades. Why buy when you can bounce? My ask is to connect with a team to complement my skill set. As I continue validation through testing, I'm seeking to connect with a business strategist, a tech co-founder, and people who would be interested in learning more about hiring out stuff they own. Please jump to the landing page at bouncehire.xyz to complete a short survey. Pitching Dink, here's Julian Morgan. When was the last time you sat down and totaled your travel expenses? How much do you find yourself spending on travel? Well, let me tell you, sadly, the answer is most likely pretty shocking. The average household in Hobart spends $15,000 per year on travel expenses, which is a whopping 16% of the average household income. The average Australian spends 216 hours per year in a car commuting, which is the equivalent of almost six full-time working weeks. That's six full-time working weeks, losing your money and your time. This to me is unacceptable. My startup Dink has a solution. Dink provides reduced travel expenses by making carpooling safe and effortless for everybody. Drivers don't have to put in the time or even perform travel detours. Just pick up and drop off passengers wishing to travel in the same direction. Dink's distinct market advantage is its ability to provide road users with an effortless income stream by providing a network of carpools in which drivers can more effectively leverage their personal assets and time. Dink provides the power to save money by just driving. Dink taps into an underutilised segment of the transport market, carpooling. This is the gap between unconventional public transport and unaffordable on-demand services such as taxis or Uber. Dink currently has competition from taxis and Uber, however, it differentiates itself by providing exceptionally low ride prices through the creation of a community-based carpooling network. A study found that 50% of Australians don't use public transport due to either the service not existing in their area or that it doesn't suit their needs. This is why Dink has the potential to prove as the first transportation platform to become an alternative to public transport. Dink consists of two business models, an on-demand model for our passengers and a marketplace model for our drivers. The platform's revenue is generated by a commission derived from the ride transaction fee between the passengers and the drivers. Dink leverages the sharing economy in order to create a new cost-effective transportation option. So why me? I have a fierce passion for wanting to make a positive change to the world and I know that Dink is the right step in the right direction. I'm looking for a technical co-founder who can assist me in developing the platform and assist me in getting Dink to market. With the restrictions now easing off and cars becoming our primary form of getting around, now has never been a better time to invest in the future of transport. Pitching Moby ABC, here's Doris Chen. For Chinese students who need to study abroad, they have to pass one of the three standard English tests. They are TOEFL, IELTS, and PTE. 
Mobi ABC is an app for phones and tablets that make reciting vocabulary simple and rapid to assist the Chinese candidates to pass their exam as soon as possible. Vocabulary is the first barrier to pass the standard English test. Traditional ways of reciting vocabulary rely on students' willpower that takes months or even years, so it's hard for them to stick with it. As a result, some of them fail to study abroad. There is still no easy way exists to be sure to memorize a large vocabulary in a very short time. In recent years, researchers show that memorizing words and doing exercise are two recognized learning methods by mobile learning. The solution is a mobile application where candidates can recite vocabulary quickly to save time, save money, and gain high performance. Mobi ABC is not a traditional tool of memorizing words. It is designed as a task with optimized pedagogy and reciting scheme, making learning the most words in the least time. For the competitors, there are two axes. One is time, another one is reciting scheme. Since the positioning of most competitors is tool, they are in the area combined no reciting scheme and unlimited time. However, for Mobi ABC, because of its product positioning is a task, so Mobi ABC is in the area combined limited time and reciting scheme. These features make reciting vocabulary use less time, less money, and gain high efficiency. The market is very huge. The number of Chinese students studying abroad has reached about 600,000 in 2018 and 700,000 in 2019. The top three destinations are English-speaking countries. They are the United States, Australia, and Britain. The team is a compact four-person team. A product manager, a software architect, an algorithm designer, and a marketer. The average age of the team is 38 years old. Each member has more than 10 years of experience in the software development industry. We have developed a demo running on the platform of WeChat. The team is seeking a financial investor to help Mobi ABC to expand the market share. The team is willing to sell 20% of shares and equity for $100,000. Pitching Landex, here's Bevan Crofts. It can take anywhere between several months and several years to get planning approval for construction work in Australia. Take Emma for example. She runs her own business and she's bought a block of land. She's looking to build a new office and warehouses for a growing team using most of her life savings. She's waited 12 months for her consultants to put together a planning application and then get approval from council. Meanwhile, she's lost a lot of sleep and paid tens of thousands in holding costs like mortgage interest. And that's before she counts lost sales opportunities. Now Emma's not alone. In the work I do for government, I talk to people like Emma a couple of times a week. It can be a recipe for tears, whether you're a mum and dad investor a multinational company, or even if you work for government. But the checks and balances that we affectionately refer to as red tape are really important to manage the impacts of development, things like traffic or flooding. So there hasn't been an easy answer so far. Now there are software packages out there that help with pieces of the puzzle, but their subscriptions cost thousands of dollars, so they're only used by a handful of experts who do specific tasks and do them often. Now as we speak, the Tasmanian and New South Wales governments are reforming planning systems from the top down. Landex is our product to tackle this problem at the coalface. We're designing it as an app that professionals want to use a bit every day for a simple and affordable subscription and lots of scope for value-added services. Landex will capitalise on our industry experience to automate and streamline steps in the approval process, freeing up people for what they do best, making the difficult decisions. We'll take each proposal from pain point to payday, saving time and cash with less expert judgment being required to de-risk each project. In 2019, $200 billion was invested in construction and infrastructure across Australia, 
That's an average spend of about $8,000 per person every year. Planning approval fees are typically 1% of construction costs. So if we can add value to just 1% of that 1%, that's an annual revenue opportunity of about $20 million per year. And we can get there with 80,000 subscriptions for just $21 a month or the cost of a cup of coffee a week. Now my imagination is so captivated by this problem I've built my career on it. With degrees in civil engineering and business, I have a Hobart-based consultancy with work in New South Wales and Tassie. Now we're putting the finishing touches on a minimum viable product, we'll be working on three roadblocks at Landex. The first is building a high-performing team. We're looking for people with experience or connections in software development or user experience, especially in the startup world. The second is cash to fund development through a combination of debt and equity. Thirdly, we're looking to partner with council and state governments to ensure we're hitting your pain points before we go public. If any of these sound interesting to you, don't be a stranger. Here are my contact details or go to landex.com.au to find out more. So with population pressures, we need to get faster and smarter at planning for our growing communities from city to country. That's why Landex is looking to partner with you. Pitching cash return, here's Francis Rodier. Cash return, don't worry, we got it. Get your cash return. The idea came to me a year ago when my wife and I got married. We're both from overseas, so we wanted to invite our parents to this beautiful island that is Tasmania. My parents bought their flights first and I booked the hotel rooms. A few weeks later, her parents bought their flights and I booked their hotel rooms again. But I found out that the price went down by $200. I was very surprised. I didn't realize that hotel rooms can change this fast. So I took a few screenshots and I contacted the hotel and they refunded me the $200. That was a revelation. I didn't know that we could do that. So I started Googling a bit and I learned about the price guarantee. Many shops offer those. It can be from seven days up to three months. If the price changes, you can get a refund. The problem is price changes every day. A sale can happen at any time. For example, an item that you may want to buy for $2,000, a few days later could be $1,000. And if you're happy buying an item that you like, at a price that you're happy with, and then you get some money back. With, what's wrong with that? I mean, everybody would like that. How it works is you take a copy of your receipt and you send it to us. We start monitoring the price. If we find any opportunity for you to apply for a price guarantee, we send you all the information, and then you just wait for your check. Our revenue model is a 20% commission. So if you buy an item for $400 and the sale happened in the next few days, it goes down to 250, you will get $120 back and we will charge a commission of $30. There are other companies already doing that, but none in Australia. When I was Googling, I found out about Paribus in the US. They were started in 2014. In 2015, they received over $2 million in funding. In 2016, they were acquired by Capital One one of the biggest bank in the US. We currently support Harvey Norman, Kogan, Fantastic Furniture, Domain, and The Iconic. My name is Francis Rodier. I am an AWS solution architect with over 10 years in delivering IT solutions. I'm the founder of Cash Return, and I'm a finance geek. Send us your receipt and start saving today at receipt at cashreturn.com.au and we're currently in beta, so we won't charge you anything. All the money you get, you keep it for yourself. Pitching hats on, here's Matt Anning. Hats off to anyone who has mastered a foreign language. 
But have you ever not quite been able to understand someone because of their pronunciation? Like Harry Potter, despite his best intentions to magic himself to Diagon Alley, he ends up in all kinds of trouble when he mispronounces and calls out diagonally. Our focus today is the Japanese language. Foreign learners of Japanese are held at arm's length when they try to communicate with Japanese natives because the rules of pronouncing modern standard Japanese remain a secret outside of Japan. In Japanese, the word for bridge and chopsticks is the same, except for a slight change in the voice. This is also true for the words for rain and candy and thousands of others of pairs of words. How is a foreigner supposed to get a job in this environment? The information is out there, but it's all in Japanese. You could try Dorgan, an American comedian who teaches Japanese. For some laughs, check out his channels. And you can even try his Learn Japanese Pitch Accent in Just 10 Minutes video, if that sounds feasible to you. Duolingo, great for general language learning, but nothing on pitch accent. And then there's J Accent. It's a searchable Japanese dictionary for pitch accent. All three of these, though, lack something vital for a learner, an experience. Introducing Hatson. It's a game which cultivates natural Japanese pronunciation. It's a simple matter of swiping tiles up, down, left and right, much like Tinder, but probably with better outcomes. It takes time, but it gets your Japanese sounding great. The Japan Foundation does a global survey every three years, and in 2018, they found that nearly 4 million people were learning Japanese, whether as university students, travelers, foreign workers, immigrants, or just for leisure. In this market, our strategy is to diversify. Hatsuan is free for basic access, but contains paid advertising. Buy it, and you get full access and no ads. There's a subscriber Patreon channel for detailed instructions, and these are feeders to me for one-on-one -on -one lessons. You'll find us in every corner of social media because that's where Japanese language learners flock for help. Hatson is a collaborative effort between me and Tommy. Tommy graduated from Utah's in computer programming with a special focus on gaming, and I have 20 years experience teaching Japanese. We are driven by our passion to facilitate intercultural communication. Both of us have experienced the pain of not being able to say something properly, but also the benefits of working hard to get it right. Today, we want to network with programmers and we want to connect with people who are teaching or learning Japanese who would be interested in using Hatson to cultivate natural Japanese pronunciation. Pitching Cycle Inspect, here's Michael Briggs. Three years ago, my father bought his first second-hand carbon fibre road bike. Two months after purchasing that bike, however, a small paint chip led him to his local bike store to have it checked out in more detail. Not having the right skills, knowledge or technology to inspect that bike properly, however, here's where the process started to fall down. At a cost, my father had to have his bike disassembled. At a cost, he had to have it sent off to a specialist. At a cost, he had to have it inspected. And at another cost, he had to have it reassembled and sent back to him. The whole frustrating process taking almost two weeks. And the result? His bike was a write-off with a range of delaminations and cracks beneath the surface, all invisible to the naked eye. For an industry that's been in existence since the early 1970s and that's worth $4.3 billion globally, we're astounded that there is currently no solution to help cyclists track how carbon fibre fails or to provide simple, repeatable and accurate safety inspections. The problem is that carbon fibre is an inherently brittle material when it's impacted and there are only a scattering of specialist repairers around the country that understand its complexities and its limitations. For cyclists like my father who want to protect their bike, 
their safety and their hip pocket. Cycle Inspect is a digital subscription-based platform that seeks to connect you, your trusted local mechanic, and specialist repairers around the country for fast, efficient, and cost-effective safety inspections so that you can make the right repair or purchase decisions. There are around 750,000 of our primary carbon bike riding audience in Australia, but each year up to 100,000 new carbon bikes are purchased, adding to the problem with quality control. Until now, cyclists have simply been playing Russian roulette with their safety. Our ecosystem of retailers, repairers and manufacturers benefit through new business, access to the most accurate technology, and a huge amount of insight generated through inspection data. Globally, the used and new carbon fibre bike market is worth $4.3 billion. In Australia, it's worth $350 million. But with Cycle Inspect, our focus in the first three years is 15% of that market, the used carbon fibre bike and service market. Currently offering solutions in this space are the repairers themselves, retail bike mechanics who offer visual inspections only, and online tutorials and DIY carbon repair kits, which not only present a risk to cyclist safety, but potentially void warranties and insurance claims. We are a passionate team of three, with experience across brand and marketing, user experience and product design, and data analysis, who are driven by the potential to be leaders in global cycling safety. And our goal is simple, to strengthen bicycle retail, to make the process easier for consumers, and to unlock the hidden value in inspection and service data. And today, we're asking for foundational investment to help us accelerate the development of our prototype platform and take this to market. What a remarkable group. It has been an immense pleasure working with these teams during the 14-week program, and I look forward to their continued development and growth of their businesses. Now it's time to make your final investment decisions. You have a few minutes left to make sure you're happy with where your 50K is going. We'll be following up with each of you who registered through Eventbrite or the Enterprise website with an opportunity to join a conversation with each of the startups featured today. Keep an eye on your email inbox over the next few days. If you or someone you know is ready to take this step in their entrepreneurial journey, applications are open until Monday for our 2020 Launceston-based cohort, which will run from August to November. We'll be running another cohort in Hobart starting early next year. I'd like to extend our gratitude to a few program partners. The Australian Government's new and existing incubator support program, the Tasmanian Government, City of Launceston, City of Hobart, Detached Cultural Organisation, Startup Tasmania, Foot and Place Dead Printers, Rostrum, and particularly Keith, who gave up so much of his time, our expert in residence, Brian, guest presenters, Richard, Abs and Elliot, all the business leaders who mentored the teams, and Bree at Light Noise Films. Without the support of our generous partners, this program would not have been possible. Okay, finalise your investments, because that's a wrap on Born Global Digital Demo Day. Thank you so much for joining us. Be sure to follow Enterprise to keep up with Tasmania's exciting startup ecosystem.